captioning is brought to you by the Common Man Roadside Market and Deli. There are a lot of things I love about being host of New Hampshire Life, but one of them is definitely traveling around the state and exploring new towns like this one, Peterborough. Tucked away in the southern part of the state, this inviting little town attracts outdoor enthusiasts, artists, all levels of explorers, and anyone looking for that small town experience with shopping, dining, and arts. I spent the night here at Cranberry Meadow Farm Inn and it was absolutely marvelous, so I'm very well rested and ready to kick off a full day of activity. My name is Carolyn Huff. I am the chef and owner here at Cranberry Meadow Farm. We are an eight room, small bed and breakfast slash inn um, in the middle of Peterborough, New Hampshire. This was built in 1797, the, the main part. Uh, it was built as a tavern. So it was, the, it was the original tavern for Peterborough, although it wasn't the original, the original burnt down. So they, burnt, they built this one after that. And it was the original stagecoach stop for Peterborough. Um, it was on the Underground Railroad. It has an amazing history. And the people that owned it before us took wonderful, loving care of it. So it's got lots of nooks and crannies and places to discover and hide in and all of that. I've been a chef my whole life. So cooking was sort of the, the primary interest. I, I wanted a big kitchen that was open that people could walk through and have conversations. But uh, we also wanted it to be very serene. We wanted people to be able to come here and really zone out, especially when we opened in the middle of COVID. It was really important to have a place where people felt like they were away from anything that no stress, no televisions. We don't have any televisions in the rooms. We have one in one common area. Um, we just really wanted people to feel relaxed and quiet. So all of the colors are very muted. Everything is, you can hear the birds outside on the screen porch. Everything is, is very quiet. So the grounds, we've got 83 acres here. And on our trail, or on our property, is a trail that, uh, that the Conservancy maintains for us. So it's beautifully taken care of, it's well marked, and it goes up to our pond, which is called Cranberry Meadow Pond, which is why we are named Cranberry Meadow Farm. And we've got beautiful flower gardens that have been uh, kept over from the previous owners and sort of rejigged to more of, of my, my taste. Uh, we put the swimming pool in and restored old stone walls that are throughout the property. We've got a gym with a sauna, Peloton, a couple treadmills, and a rowing machine, some weights, yoga mats so people go outside and do yoga on the lawn. We've got a beautifully, it was a beautifully chlorinated wading pond when we bought it with a water feature. And when we moved in, the, the tarp hadn't been covered properly, so it was filled with thousands of tadpoles. And we decided to leave them, so now it's a frog pond. And they croon, they keep us company at dinner or at breakfast when people are sitting around. It's a, they're, they're a very sure sign that it's going to rain. When, it, when the frogs start singing, we know the rain's coming. Oh, wow. This is a very well-rounded breakfast. Oh, these are beautiful. Thank you. These little peas. Is this all from here, local? Most of it comes from my garden. Oh, that's special. Thank you very much. That's like the cutest little pea I've ever seen. <laughs> all right, I've got my frittata, my muffin, my tea the most serene atmosphere you could possibly ask for. And I'm well rested because I spent the night here. So we're uh, gonna start our day. Next stop is Mariposa, but I wanna get through all this first because it just smells delicious. Welcome to Mariposa Museum in Peterborough. I'm David Blair, co-founder and former director and now a board member. This building was a Baptist church years ago and then became home to all sorts of other enterprises. And most recently, the Monadnock Ledger was published here. And then the owner of the ledger decided to open up a marionette puppet theater. On New Year's Day of 19... 99, this building burned. It made the news nationally. It was a huge fire. 
Ted, the owner of the building and of the puppet theater, managed to get out in time. Almost all the marionettes perished, except for Madame Butterfly, who was restored. And the building was a mess. It took years before someone could figure out what to do with the space. And that someone was my wife, Linda, who decided this building could be renovated and turned into a museum of world culture. Push hard against the side of the bowl as if you were pushing toward the center. You got it. When anyone ever tells me something's hard, then I get even more determined to do it. Good. Even if I fail miserably. The exhibits, like the one you see today of the artwork of the Aboriginal artist Shane Pickett, was found by Carla Hostetler, our director. Shane Pickett was an Aboriginal painter who, toward the end of his life, and he died young, um, began to paint uh, what are called gestural abstracts. He had rheumatoid arthritis, could hardly hold a paintbrush anymore, so most of the painting that you see here was done by his hands. He just painted with his hands, with his fingers. So to him, these are landscape paintings. To me, they look more like an abstract, but they are depictions of what he saw and felt and knew in the landscape that he was looking at and living in. The museum started out as an, a collection of folk art from around the world, much of which we can allow children and adults to touch, and, and in some cases to use or to play. Am I being spastic? Am I being spastic? Am I being spastic? The objects in the collection come, the nucleus came from Linda's and my collection from living and working in Vietnam and the Philippines and some travels elsewhere. And then we have acquired a great amount of um, many, many objects and some actual collections from people in this area. Um, and that's what's allowed us to be able to show you things from, not from every country in the world, but from many of them. And to have enough of them so that I can feel comfortable taking something out and allowing children to handle it, knowing that these are everyday objects that people use, make and use, and each object has a story to tell about who made it and who uses it and where it's used. And we love telling those stories. Playing all this music has made me hungry. So we're going right across the street to Vital Provisions. In Berlin City, we make it easier to find and buy an electric vehicle. And for the first time ever, we're bringing all these options right here. Welcome to Berlin City Electric Vehicle Store pop-up. Well, we still sell thousands of gas vehicles per day. We now have electric options, like Nissan Leaf. And we have a large selection of used Teslas. Yes, Teslas. What's that? You want less wheels? How about one? They're really quiet. And they're fast. So if you're looking to try or buy an electric vehicle or a one wheel, stop by at any of our locations because life is easier at Berlin City.
I'm Kyle. I'm Heather. And we are Vital Provisions in Peterborough, New Hampshire. Vital Provisions is a dedicated gluten and dairy free cafe serving smoothies, juices, acai bowls, soup salads, sandwiches. You're in the heart of Peterborough. This area has a lot of great restaurants and what it didn't have was something that could accommodate dietary sensitivities. So that was sort of the catalyst for us deciding to open here in town. There have been emotional responses, people that are looking for something like this that can't find it, have to make it at home. They've broken down and said, we are so happy that you're here. So that's really fun. Not only are people with food sensitivities and allergies finally feeling safe coming into a place right. where they can eat comfortably knowing that they're not gonna have a reaction, but also people who don't have sensitivities and, and uh, allergies, they come in and eat the food and they're like, that's just really good food, so. We make everything in-house from scratch. That's our way of dedicating the gluten-free situation, but also making sure that it tastes delicious. So that's Breads, absolutely milks, the focus. literally everything yep. is being made in-house. Yep. A lot of work, a lot of hard work. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're making the Southern Comfort Sandwich. It's our way of dipping your toes into this whole gluten-free. So you have your classic fried chicken and waffles, but we make it gluten-free and dairy-free. Yeah, and the, the Southern Comfort is by far our most popular sandwich. Yeah. And that's one where if somebody isn't so comfortable in the world of gluten and dairy free, this is a nice introduction for them to taste it, recognize how delicious it is. And, and most people you know, couldn't tell the difference between something that has gluten in it versus this sandwich. So flavor's not compromised. All right, we got an order for Kate. Yes, that's me. Enjoy. Oh my gosh. Southern Comfort, gluten-free, dairy-free, chicken and waffles. <laughs> Bam! This is my language. <laughs> so you said that you dreamed of this? Yes, so this sandwich came why. out of years of, of depravity where I was <laughs> not able to have chicken and waffles. That was my ultimate favorite combo. And so when Kyle and I first started dating, uh, and I, I was I was so anxious to let him know I had sensitivities. You know, he's a chef. It's like right. who wants to who wants to accommodate all these needs. I can't wait to try your food, yeah, yeah. but I can't have all this. <laughs> yeah, and he was so sweet and so accommodating. So when he asked me what I wanted, I said that is that is my, oh my dream. Gosh. So, and it's a sandwich. Yeah, it is. It is the ultimate sandwich. Oh my gosh! And it's totally gluten free and dairy free. It's a mess. Good luck. Oh. <laughs> Mmm. Mmm. Oh my so god. The crisp he gets on the chicken yeah. and the softness on the inside wow. of the waffles with the crunchy on the outside. This is fantastic. Awesome. So you're from this area. I am. I've never been here, so I'm really only experiencing how quaint it is now. Has yeah. it changed a lot over the years? You know, it really has, and especially since COVID, that served as a catalyst for a lot of changeover for businesses. So a lot of people around our age who had grown up in the area, had moved away, mm. are now coming back and taking with them the experiences that they got in other places. So you're seeing a lot of new businesses opening up, a lot of resources that hadn't been available to the area before. So it's, it's a nice time to be young in this area too. Yeah, it brings a lot of new energy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. so where are you guys gonna go next? So next, we're actually going down the road to, I'm gonna go glass blowing. Have you heard about this place? Is, is that Terrapin? Yes. Yes. Yep. So I, I've never done that, and I'm really excited to get it. I think I'm gonna get like a hands-on experience. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I went once and had a great experience there too. Yeah, so, but first I have to eat this. I have to finish this <laughs> and take my time, and then uh -huh. we'll make our way over there. Awesome. <laughs> Knock, knock. Oh! It's your favorite TV hey. host. How are you? Back for season three. Can't wait. I know. I, I thought you. I'd surprise you. I know why you're really here, though. Oh. You want your season three car, don't you? No. How are you? Let's catch up. But yes, I also want my season Yeah, you want your three season car. three car. I don't blame you. Well, let's go see it. OK. <laughs> season three, new car. Dude. And it's a convertible. So I have never. I, okay, you totally threw me for a loop because I was not expecting this. Yeah. This is 
Wow. Isn't that pretty cool? Yeah, this is very cool. This is a car that I would never think to drive, but I am so freaking stoked oh, right now. Yeah, you should be. It's a 2022 Gladiator. Summer vehicle. Like Summer travel fun. Travel around yeah. New Hampshire. Oh but my gosh, This will be fun you. for fall time, winter, everything. Oh God, so, all right, yeah. I'm gonna get in it. And I'm it's gonna... a pickup truck too, so you can haul the bikes. I can put bikes. the kids back there. Exactly. <laughs> maybe not. not. Maybe not. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's to season three. Yeah. Thank you. We have adventures ahead ourselves, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go off and test drive this now. Yeah. I'm super psyched. Thanks, get, Chad. Get the heck out of here. Get it's the good heck out of here. Yeah. Bye. Have fun. <laughs>Casey and I'm the owner here at Terrapin Glass Blank Studio. We just celebrated 10 years last December, um, so it was a really big milestone for us, 10 years since we opened to the public. Um, I've been doing glass for about 15 years now, um, and we've been here in Joffrey the whole time. Our main activity here we do is memorials. Basically, when someone's loved one passes away, whether it's their pet or a person, we take the crematory ashes and we respectfully make keepsakes for them. Besides that, as you can see here, we open our studio up to the public. So we have a lot of private glass artists that rent out our studio. We have some of them in today. And we teach classes as well for beginners or more intermediate and advanced students. Um, lastly, something that we also do is we have our own product line and we do do a little bit of like custom orders and special pieces. We pretty much have our glass in one store in every major little area around and we're slowly spreading out. Um, all of our torches run on propane and liquid oxygen, which brings it well over 2,000 degrees. And then we take cold pieces of glass and we heat them up inside of the torch until it's melted and molting and moving around and we can manipulate it however we'd like. So sometimes it's solid work, oftentimes it is, and then sometimes it's hollow work like we'll have you do today. We're gonna have you give this a try. Okay. Here we are, we have the propane on on our torch. Right. And you can grab our bubble and start preheating it. As the soot starts gathering on it, we know it's starting to warm up. Yep. And as it warms up, that soot's gonna melt away, burn off. Right. And we're just gonna spin really slow. And then see how it's moving around? Yep. Come on oh. out, post spin, post spin, post spin. You got your first bubble. <laughs> you can stop and look at it. Almost looks like a balloon animal, right? Do you want to blow out the top some more? Do you want to start a new one? Yeah, I could. Do I, well, or do I heat it up? Yeah, we got to heat, heat it up, up first. Again. Yeah. Okay. We have people that are local, and they come and they may take classes. We do get a lot of tourists here as well, big groups of people that come through. Sometimes um, different businesses send little groups out to kind of do team bonding. Um, and we do hour long classes with them where we do a simple demo and then we kind of set them all up and they spend the whole rest of their hour working on their own workstation and we just kind of talk them through the process. We try to make it light and fun. Um, often they come up with some really funky items, but everyone really enjoys it and they leave really appreciating the art of glass. That should be good. Go ahead and try it. Nice, that was good. Check out your bubble, it's so nice and even. 
Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Good practice. Maybe you could heat right there okay. and then blow that out a little bit more. So this is a work in progress. It takes, how long did you say to cool? It takes about at least five hours. Five hours overnight. to cool. So I'm gonna keep working on this and uh, I'll see the final result later. If you're interested in learning more about our business, here you can find all that we do on our website at terrapinglass.com. And thanks to our presenting sponsor, Visit New Hampshire, for this great clip on Monadnock Oil and Vinegar Company. Being outside on the tractor, there's nothing when you're out tedding a field or raking a field, and it's just me, the tractor, and the view. I mean, how can you sit in a cubicle when that's your view? My name's Corey Snow. I'm a hay farmer, and I own Monadnock Oil and Vinegar. I grew up on a working dairy farm. One of my first jobs when I was a kid, probably first, second grade, was feeding all the calves. We've been scratching a living out of the earth for a long time in New Hampshire. Growing up, I knew primarily where most of my food came from. If we had pork for dinner, it came out of that barn. If we had beef, it came out of the barn over there. When I met my better half, she and I worked really hard to know where our food came from and made sure we appreciated where it came from. Never thought twice about olive oil. Today, it's we want it cheap and we want a lot of it. And the only way to do that is to make olive oil that really isn't the quality we're looking for. So we found ourselves trying to seek out good olive oil. We decided, what the heck, let's do it. Peterborough is a great place to be. You know, you see Mount Monadnock in the background as you're driving into town and you walk downtown Peterborough, everyone smiles at you, says hi to you. It's just a fun, friendly place to be. Our whole philosophy of our store is try before you buy. You know what you're getting. We love educating people. I love seeing people happy. I love seeing people's faces when they try the stuff for the first time and go, oh my God, I didn't know vinegar could be that delicious or I didn't know olive oil could taste so good. It's a thrill when that happens. When I'm not selling olive oil and farming, any free moment I get, I try to be outdoors as much as possible. I'm fishing, I'm kayaking, I'm hiking. That's how I live free. Hi everyone, welcome to the Peterborough Players here in beautiful Peterborough, New Hampshire. My name is Bridget Byrne. I'm a longtime member of the acting company at the Players, also the marketing director. And I've had the great good pleasure to get to do a bunch of shows here on the Players stage. The Peterborough Players has an incredible history. It was started in 1933 by a single mother of three who looked at this barn and said, there should be a theater here. And at the time, it had no running water, no electricity. And Edith Bond Stearns, who started this, um, I think must have just been an incredible visionary because it's still going strong. What's really wonderful about the players is that they are a family. They are a family with one another. They are also a family with the community. It's really cool to come. I do a lot of regional theater, and it's really cool to come to a town where people just know, hey, are you with the players? Are you with the players? Oh, I haven't seen you before. Are, you must be with the players. The fact that it is such a known entity in the community is really beautiful because it means the theater is very well supported, uh, which feels really great. And I just couldn't believe the wonderful quality of work that is being done up here. So I wanted to be a part of it. The Peterborough Players is different than really basically any company that I've worked with before because it truly feels like a family, it truly feels like a company and a community. They do the classics and they do the musicals and, and everything that people would expect, but they also bring new work and innovative ideas and um, pieces that really engage people so that you can come and have fun and that's great, but you also get the chance to really think deeply about issues and um, have conversations with your fellow community members about the plays. And so they serve the purpose of being storytellers and being leaders quite well, I think. I was taught that the theater itself is a, a, a big library. 
And it's the job of any not-for-profit theater that takes itself seriously, which the Peterborough Players does, to choose from every section of that library. And so we do a mixture of classics, we do contemporary plays, we've done two US premieres in the past uh, two years. And uh, there's also, now that I'm the one choosing, uh, it's what appeals to me. Does the play, does it spark something in me? And I am finding that uh, I see my friends in a lot of these roles, you know? We also uh, audition people, um, new people to be in them, but it's great to have that resident company that you know, I know that person could do this. I know that will work here and, um, and sort of create the whole season that way. And certainly to grow the company with these new new folks that come in so that new people become old friends, which Absolutely. is part of it too. So rather than just keeping the, a resident company static, it continues to grow in all kinds of ways. If you've never been to the Peterborough Players or if you don't come all the time, now is the time to reinvest in this community. Come see a fabulous show. You should get tickets on our website, peterboroughplayers.org, and invest in your community because they're investing in you. Well, thank you, Bridget, for uh, showing me around. I actually have heard about the Peterborough Players a lot, but had never been, so it's got quite a history. Well, it's our pleasure. Thank you for being here with us. Always glad to share with a new person to the players. Yes, and I get to actually stick around for a show tonight. Lucky me. But if you're looking for a new place to explore or want to come to this area, follow our itinerary or as always, come up and explore for your own Peterborough, New Hampshire. I absolutely love it. See you next week. Ah! Wake up! <sighs> Sorry. Oh, are we good? The electric. Okay. Remember the electric slide? Okay. What would seagulls be called if they flew over the bay? Bagels. <laughs> That's not a good one. My daughter told me that. I think I got it right. Okay. It's good. Bagels. Bagels. <laughs>